Let's see if we got it right this time. Are we back? Hello, you guys. Welcome to the channel. Give me a second to pull up my YouTube channel to make sure that we are at that we are indeed live, and then no other funny bit. Yes, we're live. Um, sweet. Welcome to. The, it's been a while since we've done the lives, eh? Uh, it feels good to be back. I'm your host, Keith. Man of literacy, being a knowledge, information, and at the very least, hopefully, a bit of entertainment. Um, as per usual, thank you guys for considering to subscribe if you're new. All the old squad, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate the hell out of you. Um, you can find different ways of supporting the channel in the description box. Um, Cash App, Patreon, my Etsy shop. And, uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, tonight we're going, or this evening, tonight, mo afternoon, morning, wherever you are. This is a book by Christian Larson, um, written in the, uh, the mid-20th century. And uh, it's titled, Your Forces and How to Use Them. And I have not read it, so this will be my first time reading it with you guys. I do know, however, that I read the first um, paragraph of the first chapter. And I thought, well, sh well shucks, this has got to be the one. This is, this is our next book. Shidori, hello, how's it going, Shidori? Welcome, 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 everyone. Everyone slap that uh, comment button for us. That would be, or not comment, that like button for us. Thank you, thank you. And shall we start? Normally I give people a couple minutes to come in just so they can, you know, do their thing. Um, I'm sipping on some, some purple sage tincture water at the moment. You guys roll up your J's, pack your oregano, glass of wine, or a cup of tea. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever does your thing, whatever floats your boat. And uh, we'll get this cracking in just a few, in just a few minutes. If there's any troubles with the audio too, you guys just let me know so I can fix it accordingly. And uh, we will be stimulating your senses with some ear, with some ear, with some ear music in the background. Hopefully, we'll have a diet in dialed in this time. You know, sometimes it can be a little tricky. But if there are any issues, just let me know. I'm stoked to be reading a new book too. By the way, I'm super stoked. It's been a while since I sat down and just enjoyed myself with a good read, you know. It's 3.30 BB. So where are you, BB? And damn. You're further than Hawaii? I'm not sure where you are. My day's been good, Chidori. My, my day's been good. Thanks for asking. Worked. I came home. Worked in the garden. Um, chilled a bit. And that's it. That's it. I hope you guys' day is going well too. Nine people are watching. We're going to go here because nine is a good number. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, please everyone slap that like button. Let's, 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 let's rig the, uh, let's rig the, um, YouTube algorithm, what you say. And let's begin with your forces and how to use them by Christian Larson forward there are a million energies in man what may we not become when we learn to use them all this is the declaration of the poet, and though poetry is usually inspired by transcendental visions and therefore more or less impressed with apparent exaggerations, nevertheless, there is in this poetic expression far more actual practical truth than we may at first believe. How many energies there are in man? No one knows. 
but there are so many that even the keenest observers of human activity have found it impossible to count them all. And as most of these energies are remarkable, to say the least, and some of them are so remarkable as to appear both limitless in power and numberless in possibilities, we may well wonder what man will become when he learns to use them all. When we look upon human nature in general, we may fail to see such improvement in power and worth as compared with what we believe the race has been in the past. And therefore we conclude that humanity will continue to remain about the same upon this planet until the end of time. But when we investigate the lives of such individuals as have recently tried to apply more intelligently the greater powers within them, we come to a different conclusion. We then discover that there is evidence in thousands of human lives of a new and superior race of people, a race that will apply a much larger measure of the wonders and possibilities that exist within them. It is only a few years, not more than a quarter of a century, since modern psychology began to proclaim that the new science of human thought and action, so that we have had but a short time to demonstrate what a more intelligent application of our energies and forces can accomplish. But already the evidence is coming in from all sources, revealing results that frequently border upon the extraordinary. Man can do far more with himself and his life than he has been doing in the past. He can call into action and successfully apply far more ability, energy, and worth than his forefathers ever dreamed of. So much has been proven during this brief introductory period of the New Age. Then, what greater things may we not reasonably expect when we have had 50 or 100 years more in which to develop and apply those larger possibilities which we now know to be inherent in us all? It is the purpose of the following pages not only to discuss the greater powers and possibilities in man but also to present practical methods through which they may be applied we have been aware of the fact for centuries that there is more in man than what appears on the surface. But it is only in recent years that the, uh, that the more as well as to work out better methods for the thorough and effective application of those things on the surface which we have always employed. In dealing with a subject that is so large, so new, however, it is necessary to make many statements that may at first sight appear to be unfounded or at least exaggerated. But if the reader will thoroughly investigate the basis of such statements or exaggerations in this book, but will wish that every strong statement made had been made, uh, had been made many times as strong. When we go beneath the surface of human life and learn what greater things are hidden beneath the ordinary layers of mental substance and vital energy, we scribe even a fraction of his larger and richer life. We may try to give impression to our thoughts at such times by employing the strongest statements and the most forceful adjectives that we can think of. But even these prove little and nothing. So therefore we may conclude that no statement that attempts to describe the more in man can possibly be too strong. Even the strongest fails to say one thousandth of what we would say should we speak the whole truth. We shall all admit this, and accordingly shall find it advisable not to pass judgment upon strong statements, but to learn to understand and apply those greater powers within ourselves that are infinitely stronger than the strongest statement that could possibly be made. I like this guy. He's like, hey, even if it sounds like an exaggeration, you best believe that even a strong exaggeration falls one one thousandth short of the entirety of the truth that is the possibility of man. So do not be dissuaded by bold statements in this text for even bold statements are not enough i like it i like this guy 
Good forward, sir. What's this guy's name again? Uh, we're not done yet, though. Those minds who... If it's buffering, you guys, just give me a... a uh, refresh your screens. Usually, if you refresh your screens, it, it, um, it will reload the buffering. If you guys reload your screens, it should fix the buffering. It was buffering on my end too, and, and then I I just reloaded the screen and I, I continued. So um, give that a shot if it starts to buffer, because um, y'all know how YouTube streams can be, especially for my lives. I swear my internet is flawless. I got a brand new computer, but my YouTube live streams seem to. Um, not be the kindest. BB, I mean, I refreshed and it was okay. Cool. So, yeah, guys, if you're so BB, I'm glad. Hopefully, it didn't, ref it wasn't buffering too long, BB. But, um, it was there. It recorded, you know what I mean? Like, if you're watching this video after the live, it won't hear the buffer. Um, Brandy, nice to see ya. Um, if for any reason you refresh and it still continues to buffer, then then holy hopscotch, Batman! I guess <laughs> I guess that is it. But we'll continue. We'll finish the forward. Those whose minds may believe uh, that the human race is to continue weak and imperfect as usual should consider what remarkable steps in advance have recently been taken in nearly all fields of human activity. And then they should remember that the greater powers in man, as well as a scientific study of the use of his lesser powers, have been almost wholly neglected. The question then that will naturally arise is, what man might make of himself if he would only apply the same painstaking science to his own development and advancement as he now applies in other fields? He did not, uh, if he did not, we would not, in another generation or two, witness unmistakable evidence of the coming of a new and superior race, and would not strong men and women become far more numerous than ever before in the history of the world. Each individual will want to answer these questions accordingly to his own point of view, but whatever his answer may be, we all must agree that human can be, become and achieve far more than even the most sanguine indications of the present which may be predicted. And it is the purpose of the following pages to encourage as many people as possible to study and apply these greater powers within them, so that they may not only become greater and richer and more worthy as individuals, but may also become the forerunners, the forerunners of that higher and more wonderful race of which we all have so fondly dreamed. I like this guy. So that was the end of the forward. And if it buffered and you missed the forward, he basically was... Thank you kindly, Richie, for the precise feedback on the quality of the stream. Um, just a side note, Richie would love to have you on the live for a, a maybe not necessarily a whole reading by candlelight sort of thing, but um, like read and commentary would be super cool. Like have you commentate while I read on the live. I think people would love that because everyone has been a huge fan of your mind so far. Anywho, um, I can't necessarily fix the echoing on my end. At least I don't know how. But, uh, but yeah, Brandy Peace. To recap the forward, if you missed it, he basically said, you're going to come across some things in this text that sound extremely bold even teetering on the brink of mm, slight exaggeration 
Uh, and he says, fear not, fear not, good friend, because even if it seems exaggerated to understand the whole truth that is the to understand the whole truth that is the potential of the human race even something exaggerated is one one thousandth the magnitude of what we are actually capable of so fear not the bold claims and statements for even those fall shy of your true potential I like it. So that was the forward. If you're just checking in, what up, you guys? I'm your host, Keith, the man of literacy, to bring in knowledge, information, and hopefully at the least a bit of entertainment. Infotainment, as I've been hearing come up a lot lately, this is Your Forces and How to Use Them by Christian Larson. We will crack into the first chapter. You guys ready? Cool. Glad to hear that, BB. All right, chapter one. The ruling principles of man. So this is what I read when I just opened up the book and read it and thought, okay, this is it. This is a promise to yourself. So you guys all got to listen to this, repeat it in your mind, and have this be a promise to yourself. This is a good trick of, of getting yourself to commit to something is, or, or see something through is to sort of Tell yourself beforehand, all right, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to make a promise to myself to go through with something or to take something more seriously than I normally would or to give something more energy than I normally would. Um, So I love, also love that he does this too. So this is the promise to yourself. Reads. To be so strong. So this is the promise to ourselves. To be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet, to make all your friends feel that there is something in them, to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true, to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best, to be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own, to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future, to wear a cheerful countenance at all times and give every living creature you meet a smile, to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others, to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of yourself and to proclaim this fact to the world, not in loud words, but in great deeds. To live in the faith that the whole world is on your side, so long as you are true to the best that is in you. That's the promise to yourself. The purpose of the following pages will be to work out the subject chosen in the most thorough and practical manner. In brief, to analyze the whole nature of man, find all the forces in his possession, whether they be apparent or hidden, active or dormant, and to present methods through which all those forces can be applied in making the life of each individual richer, greater, and better. To make every phase of this work as useful as possible to the greatest number possible, not a single statement will be made that all cannot understand, and not a single idea will be presented that anyone cannot apply to everyday life. We all want to know what we actually actually possess in the physical, the mental, and apply it in the most successful manner. It is results in practical life that we want. And we are not true to ourselves or the race until we learn to use the powers within us so effectively that the greatest results possible within the possibilities of human nature are secured. When we proceed with a scientific study of the subject, we find that the problem before us is to know what is in us and how to use what is in us. 
After much study of the powers of man, both conscious and subconscious, we have come to the conclusion that if we only knew how to use these powers, we could accomplish practically anything that we may have in view, and not only realize our wants to the fullest degree, but also reach even our highest goal. Though this may seem to be a strong statement, nevertheless we examine the whole nature of man. We are compelled to admit that it is true, even its fullest sense, and that therefore not a single individual can fail to realize his wants and reach his goal after he has learned how to use the powers that are in him. This is not mere speculation, nor is it simply a beautiful dream. The more we study the lives of people who have achieved and the more we study our own experience every day, the more convinced we become that there is no reason whatever why any individual should not realize all his ambitions and much more. The basis of this study will naturally be found in the understanding of the whole nature of man as we must know what we are before we can know and use what we inherently possess. In analyzing human nature, a number of methods have been employed, but there are only three in particular that are of actual value uh, for our present purpose. The first of these declares that man is composed of ego, consciousness, and form. And though this analysis is most complete, yet it is also the most abstract and is therefore not easily understood. Interesting. So he's already touching into, you can call it this sort of esoteric or occult knowledge. He has his three representations of existence. Um, he calls it ego, consciousness, and form. So the ego can be, I would assume, the most finite. Um, I don't know, form would be the most finite. Consciousness would be, the, I'm assuming, what's, um, what operates form. And the ego, man, I'm okay, curious how he's pulled. Well, let's see how he breaks. Maybe, let me not put words into the man's mouth. The second analysis, which is simpler and which is employed almost exclusively by the majority, declares that man is body, mind, and soul. See, he just... My bad, sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, sir. But as much as this idea is thought and spoken of, there are very few who actually understand it. In fact, the usual conception of man as body, mind, and soul will have to be completely reversed in order to become absolutely true. The third analysis, which is the simplest and the most serviceable, declares that man is composed of individuality and personality, and it is this conception of human nature that will constitute the phases of our study in this work. Before we pass to the more practical side of the subject, we find it profitable to examine briefly these various ideas concerning the nature of man. In fact, every part of our human analysis that refers to the ego simply must be understood if we are to learn how to use the forces we possess. And the reason for this is found in the fact that the ego is the I am, the ruling principle in man, the center and source of individuality, the originator of everything that takes place in man, and that primary, and that primary something to which all other things in human nature are secondary. When the average person employs the term ego, he thinks that he is dealing with something that is hidden so deeply in the abstract that it can make but little difference whether he understand it or not. This, however, does not happen to be true, because it is the ego that must act before any action can take place anywhere in the human system, and it is the ego that must originate the new before any step in advance can be taken. And in addition, it is extremely important to realize that the power of will to control the forces we possess depends directly upon how fully conscious we are of the ego as the ruling principle within us. Can you guys do me a favor? Just just comment anything in the in the chat box so I know that 
like the video hasn't stopped working and I'm just talking to an empty room or something like that. Um, otherwise, I have to reach over and refresh the page myself, and that's kind of distracting. Anywho, I'll continue. Uh, we understand, therefore, that it is absolutely necessary to associate all thoughts, all feeling, and all actions of mind or personality to the ego, or what we shall hereafter speak of as the I am. The first step to be taken in this connection is to recognize the I am in everything you do and to think always of the I am as being you, the supreme you. Whenever you think, realize that it is the I am that originated the thought. Whenever you act, realize that it is the I am that gives initiative to that action. And whenever you think of yourself or try to be conscious of yourself, realize that the I am occupies the throne of your entire field of consciousness. Another important essential is to affirm silently in your own mind that you are the I am. And as you affirm this statement, or as you simply declare positively, I am, think of the I am as the being, the ruling principle in your whole world, as being distinct and above and superior to all, el to all else in your being, and as being you, yourself, in the highest, largest, and most comprehensive sense. You thus lift yourself up, so to speak. Lift yourself up, so to speak, to the mountaintop of masterful individuality. You enthrone yourself. You become true to yourself. You place yourself where you belong. Through this practice, you not only discover yourself to be the master of your whole life, but you elevate all your conscious actions to that lofty state in your consciousness that we may describe as the throne of your being, or as the center of action within which the ruling I am lives and moves and has its being. If you wish to control and direct the forces you possess, you must act from the throne of your being, so to speak, or in other words, from that conscious point, your mental world wherein all power of control, direction, and initiative proceeds. And this point of action is the center of the I am. You must act not as a body, not as a personality, not as a mind, but as the I am. And the more fully you recognize and direct all other things that you may possess. In brief, whenever you think or act, you should feel that you stand with the I am at the apex of mentality on the very heights of your existence. And you should at the same time realize that this I am is you, the supreme you. The more you practice these methods, the more you lift yourself up above the limitations of mind and body into the realization of your own, of your own true position as a masterful individuality. In fact, you place yourself where you belong, over and above everything in your organized existence. Whenever we examine the mind of the average person, we find that they usually identify themselves with mind or body. So it's, I'm, I'm going to just say something right now. I have, I, you guys might have this too. We have this habit of reading something, and you know how that saying goes? I was just watching Avatar last night. <laughs> we have tried, we, we have tried to... <laughs> to teach your kind. It is hard to fill a cup that is already full. And he goes, oh, I promise you my cup's not full at all. And she goes, let us see if we cannot cure your insanity. I forgot his name. What's the dude's name? Anywho, I'm reading something and I'm like, oh, he's going, as I already demonstrated, I'm like, oh, he's going here with it. Oh, I know this. Oh, he's going here. It's a fucking terrible habit. Um, I, I don't know if you guys do that, but I definitely do it. And I'm finding that he's kind of... Whoa. Um, I'm finding that he's, um, it's spread. So he said most, your average person refers to, what do you say? They either think of, uh, think that they are body or that they are mind. And that's all I've ever learned. 
Um, is that too loud for you guys? Should I close the garage? Because you know how you guys always hear, well, all is mind, all is mind. All, especially if you study Hermetics or Kabbalion or... Um, any derivative thereof. You might just take a little smoke break while this guy does his car thing. By smoke break, I mean oregano. We're smoking oregano, you guys. You guys gotta go to the bathroom, now's your chance. Oh, Serafina, thanks for the donation, girl. Damn, thank you kindly, I appreciate that. Shout out. You guys like my sweater, by the way? Can you see? <laughs> I thought this sweater would be fitting. Shout out to my brother who got it for me. Can you see it? It's a Yoda sweater. Excuse me. It's a Yoda sweater, and it says, "Read." Really cool. Um, no, I'm not drinking coffee. Remember that purple sage tincture that I made a while ago? Um, I've been drinking the hell out of it because I made like 12 bottles to sell and I only sold like six of them. So now I just have a shit ton of purple sage tincture and I don't want it to go bad. So I've been slamming sage water for like two weeks now. Um, no, not coffee. I'm, not, I'm the type of person that drinks coffee and feel like I'm going to have an anxiety attack. But, um... Everything sounds so great. Greetings, TT. Salavi, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. Alright, cool. We'll, con we'll continue. Um, yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I just find it interesting and refreshing that he that I'm he, that he's throwing a wrench in my own philosophy because I, I tend to read things that that just reaffirm what I already know which kind of pigeonholes me into it's just it's just a bad habit that I, that I feel like I get into so I'm excited for the rest of the book. That's what I'm getting at is I'm stoked. I'm stoked at this book so far. So here we go. When we examine the mind of the average person, we find that they usually identify themselves with mind or body. They either think that they are body or that they are mind. And therefore, they can control neither mind nor body. The I am in their nature is submerged in a bundle of ideas, some of which are true and some of which are not. And their thought is usually controlled by those ideas without receiving any direction whatever from that principle within them that alone was intended to give direction. Such a one lives in the lower such a one that's a funny way to phrase it. Such a one lives in the lower state of human existence. But as we can control life only when we give directions from the upper story, we discover just why the average person neither understands their forces nor has the power to use them. They must first elevate themselves to the upper story of the human structure, and the first and most important step to be taken in this direction is to recognize the I am as the ruling principle and that the I am is you. Another method that will be found highly important in this connection is to take a few moments every day and try to feel that you, the I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, try to feel that you, the I am, are not only above mind and body, but in a certain sense, distinct from mind and body. In fact, try to isolate the I am for a few moments, every day and from the rest of your organized being. This practice will give you what may be termed a perfect consciousness of your own individual uh, I am. And as you gain that consciousness, you will always think of the supreme I am whenever you think of yourself. 
Accordingly, all your mental action will be from that time on, come directly from the I Am. And if you will continue to stand above all such actions at all times, you will be able to control them and direct them completely. Nice. So far, everything going good over there. Thank you again for the donation, Serafina. Serafinia. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong the first time. Serafinia. That's a cool name. Um, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate the hell out of that. Um, all right, where do I... Okay, to examine consciousness and form in this connection is hardly necessary, except to define briefly their general nature so that we may have a clear idea of what we are dealing with in the conscious field as well as in the field of expression. The I am is fundamentally conscious. That is, the I am knows what exists in the human field or in the human sphere and what is taking place in the human, um, in the human sphere. And that constitutes consciousness. In brief, you are conscious when you know that you exist and have some definite idea as to what is taking place in your sphere of existence. I think, therefore, I am, in other words, is what he's saying. Um, when we speak of, uh, what we speak of as form is everything in the organized personality that has shape and that serves in any manner to give expression to the forces within us. In the exercise of consciousness, we find that the I am employs three fundamental actions. When the I am looks out upon life, we have simple consciousness. When the I am looks upon its own position in life, we have self-consciousness. And when the I am looks up into the vastness of real life, we have cosmic consciousness. In simple consciousness, you are only aware of those things that exist externally to yourself. But when you begin to become conscious of yourself as a distinct entity, you begin to develop self-consciousness. When you begin to turn your attention to the great within and begin to look up into the real source of all things, you become conscious of that world that seemingly exists with, within all worlds. And when you enter upon this experience, you are on the borderland of cosmic consciousness, the most fascinating subject that has ever been known. When we come to define body, mind, and soul, we must, as previously stated, reverse the usual definition. In the past, we have constantly used the expression, uh, I have a soul, which naturally implies the belief that I am a body, and so deeply has this idea fixed in the average mind that nearly everybody thinks of the body whenever the term me or myself is employed. But in this attitude, this attitude of mind, the individual is not above the physical states of thought and feeling. In fact, he is more or less submerged in what may be called a bundle of physical facts and ideas of which he has very little control. You cannot control anything in your life, however, until you are above it. I'm going to repeat that one. You cannot control anything in your life, however, until you are above it. You cannot control what is in your body until you realize that you are above your body. You cannot control what is in your mind until you realize that you are above your mind. And therefore, no one can use the forces within them to any extent so long as they think of themselves as being the body or as being localized exclusively in the body. It's gold, a gold mine. Oh, Serafina, yeah, thank you again, sir. <laughs> thank you so much. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to do the second one. I pre thank you kindly for it, though. Thank you, thank, thank you. Um, when we examine the whole nature of man, we find that the soul is the man himself. 
and that the ego is the central principle of the soul. Or to use another expression, the soul, including the I am, constitutes the individuality, and that visible something through which individuality finds expression constitutes the personality. If you wish to understand your forces and gain that masterful attitude necessary to the, con uh, to the control of your forces, train yourself to think that you are a soul. But do not think of the soul as something vague or mysterious. Think of the soul as being the individual you and that and that, that expression can possibly Im imply. Train yourself to think that you are a master of mind and body because you are above mind and body and to possess the power to use everything that is in mind and body. End chapter one. I thought that was going to take a lot longer. Should we read chapter two? I'm super down if you guys are because this is chapter two short. Chapter two short. I'm going to read it. I'm doing it. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. John Smith! What's up, man? Um, I noticed you, but I didn't say that I... I didn't comment that I noticed you earlier. My bad. But, uh... Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Brandy. Yeah, Q... 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 <laughs> Q is gonna jump back on the live. No, Q is gonna jump back on the live. I think he said sometime this next month, which is in like two days. So, um, yeah, cues homies. Ishira is on right now. Nice. I needed to hear some people online was starting to feel lonely. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've had a heavy ass couple weeks, man. <coughs> Not heavy, but. I guess heavy. Anywho. <coughs> and by the sounds of it, a lot of people have been sort of going through it. I mean, if you look at the state of the world, you would be insane to not be feeling insane at the moment. You know what I mean? Considering what the hell is going on in the world. Welcome. If you feel that way to the Man of Letters channel, as I like to say, welcome home. Take your shoes off. Stay a while because shit gets real out there. And if anything, I would like this platform to be a place where we can all just, you know what I mean? Come in after a heavy, after a heavy rain and some adventurous rompings and sit by the fireside with a pint of some good tasty ale and share the stories of everything that we've been coming across. Um, Hey man, I learned some shit. Like, oh really? Me too. What'd you learn about? Oh dude, I almost got eaten by a werewolf out there. Shit's getting crazy. But whatever it is, that's that's all that's all man of letters is. You know what I mean? So we'll start this next chapter. You guys you guys roll up your J's, pack your oregano, pour a glass of wine, a pint of ale, a pint of of medium strength ale, light medium strength ale, kinda creamy, maybe a wheat flavored with some spicy notes maybe some clove or something exotic like that you know um, we'll start in just a minute before we start uh, um, before we start what was I saying ooh I wanted to give a proper shout out to my patreon I've been meaning to make a video about Patreon members, and I haven't done it. Sorry, you guys, but my Patreon members have been killing it as of late. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. Like I said, I'll make a video thanking you guys each personally. It's, um... You guys are... When I say you guys are real MVPs, I mean you guys are real MVPs. So thanks, you guys. And everyone else who's been shopping at the Etsy shop, thank you kindly. It's slowed down, which is, like, is actually a blessing because I've been just up to my freaking eyeballs and orders for at least three months and it's it's stressful in its own right um so but at the same time thank you because that's how i get paid so thank you guys for shopping edgy shop thank you guys for patreon thank you guys for supporting here on the community like just fucking big thank you to all you guys um thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. 
looks okay. like we'll. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you guys can also find this online. Uh, just ty just type in the title of the book and type online text, and it's within the top links. It shouldn't be that hard to find if you're so moderately computer literate. It's it's and you can follow along. Sometimes following along helps you really retain things. You know what I mean? Like obviously, it helps. So if you want to get that extra oomph, just feel free to look it up. Um, be enjoyed, dope, nice. I'm sorry, whatever, man, boss, you'll be bro. Oh, with the ukulele? What are we doing with the ukulele? You guys do know I love me some ukulele on this run. Huh? Nice, I found a really good channel on Harriet Tubman being in secret societies. <laughs> Sign me up. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Alright, we're gonna light the candles and we're gonna start this next chapter, right? I'm lighting these candles with a straight up torch. That's all gangster, yeah. Oh, I love candlelight so much, man. Candlelight is just so one of the most beautiful things, period, hands down, is the glow of candlelight. I don't care what the fuck you're doing. If you're having like a nice romantic time, a personal chilling time, hanging, even hanging with the homies, jamming candlelight, it's just something about it. Fire, something about that fire. Uh, your sound is off, a little echo. Yeah, we've been having an echo the whole time, homie, my bad. I don't know how to fix that. Don't, I don't think we can. I don't think we can fix that. So without further ado, if you guys would like, I can... Um, where is my little thing at? What the hell? Okay, here we go. Chapter two. This chapter is titled How We Govern the Forces We Possess. Actually, let me do this. Um, everyone cover your ears. I plan on making one video of all these audiobooks after I finish the whole book so that I can upload it in one video from start to finish. And um, I just clapped in you guys' ears because then I can see the spike in the audio so I can without having to listen to all the fucking text to find where the chapter ends I can see the clap that way it'll help help so for what I want to do. so that's why I clapped anyway let's let's continue chapter two how we govern the forces we possess man is ever in search of strength it is the strong man that wins it is the man with power that scales the heights to be strong is to be great, and it is the privilege of greatness to satisfy every desire, every aspiration, every need. But strength is not for the few alone. It is for all. And the way to strength is simple. Proceed this very moment to the mountain tops of strength you now possess. And whatever may happen, do not come down. Do not weaken under adversity. Resolve to remain as strong, as determined, and as highly enthused during the darkest night of adversity as you are during the sunniest day of prosperity. Do not feel disappointed when things seem disappointing. 
Keep the eyes single upon the same brilliant future regardless of circumstances, conditions, or events. Do not lose heart when things go wrong. Continue undisturbed in your original resolve to make all things go right. To be overcome by adversity and threatening failure is to lose strength. To allow, uh, to always remain in the same lofty, determined mood is to constantly grow in strength. The man who never weakens when things are against him will grow stronger and stronger until all things will delight to be for him. He will finally have all the strength he may desire or need. Be always strong and you will always be stronger. Whenever you think or whenever you feel, whenever you speak, whenever you act or whatever may be taking place in your life, your supreme idea should be that you are above it all, superior to it all and have control of it all. The simple must take this higher grand in all action. A thought and consciousness before you can control yourself and direct for practical purposes the forces you possess. Therefore, what has been said in connection with the I am, the soul, and the individuality as being one, and as standing at the apex of human existence, is just as important as anything that may be said hereafter in connection with the application of the forces in man to practical action. And though this phase of the subject may appear to be somewhat abstract, we shall find no difficulty in understanding it more fully as we apply the ideas evolved. In fact, when we learn to realize that we by nature occupy a position that is above mind and body, this part of the subject will be more interesting than anything else, and its application more profitable. We can define individuality more fully by stating that it is the invisible man and that everything in man that is visible belongs to his individuality. It is the individuality that initiates, that controls or directs. Therefore, to control and use a force in your own system, you must understand and develop individuality. Your individuality must be made distinct, determined, and positive. You must constantly know that you are and what you are and what you want. And you must constantly be determined to secure what you want. It is individuality that makes you different from all organized entities. And it is highly developed individuality that gives you the power to stand out distinct above the mass. And it is the degree of individuality that you possess that determines largely what position you are to occupy in this world <whistles> for some reason I'm catching Willy Wonka vibes is that right you guys getting that is that just me is that just me might be just me wait someone's hating on my mic um because the mic is pretty good I don't know if you noticed but I have a sock on my mic <laughs> as a uh, as a pop guard because that's how we roll baby all right continuing um whenever you see a man or woman who is different who seems to stand out distinct and who has something vital about them that no one else seems to possess you have someone whose individuality is highly developed and you also have someone who is going to make their mark in the world Take two people of equal power, ability, and efficiency, but with this difference. In the one, individuality is highly developed, while in the other it is not. You know at once which one of these two is going to reach the highest places in the world of achievement. And the reason is that the one who possesses individuality lives above mind and body thereby being able to control and direct the forces and powers of mind and body. The man or woman, however, whose individuality is weak, lives more or less down in mind and body, 
and instead of controlling mind and body, is constantly being influenced by everything from the outside that may enter their consciousness. This is such a beautiful way of painting the picture uh, of, of getting outside of yourself. I, I love this. This is so... Books, man. Who would have thought? <laughs> who would have th- Who would have thought you could learn shit from reading books? What? <laughs> what a concept! What a concept! We should read books more often. Has anyone ever had that thought before? That must. That can't be a new thought, right? That we should read more. You guys, we should see my shirt. Back to my sweater. Read. Move my hair out of the way. It says read, and then it says, and the force is with you. <laughs> read, and the force is with you. It's a Yoda sweater. If you're listening, and not looking. Um, let me recap because some of the most important things he said he keeps coming back on that and I want to might as well he's saying that there's mind and body um, but that we must rise above mind and body and the reason why we must rise above mind and body is because according to the author that's how we operate mind and body when we are existing inside of it then we are influenced by everything that's going on in it. All the circumstances, the light and the dark, all the duality, we're all the everything we're influenced by. Whereas if we rise above that, we do the influencing of that. And the Kabbalion talks about this perfectly. He says, um, well, I, sh- I should say the three initiates in the Kabbalion. It's one of those passages that, I, that just stuck with me. It says, um, you will always be at the mercy of the plane that you are on. Um, you, you, we, in other words, we must always serve those on the on the plane above us. We dictate the lower plane, but we must serve the higher. And that's from the the, the Kabbalion from Hermetics. I don't know why that stuck with me, but this is beautifully said here. I mean, he talks about exiting the mind and body so that you can control the mind and body. Be the I am that the origin comes from for the mind and body. Um, all right. To develop individuality, the first essential is to give the I am its true and lofty position in your mind. The I am is the very center of individuality, and the more fully conscious you become of the I am, the more of the power that is in the I am that you arouse. And it is the arousing of this power that makes individuality positive and strong. Another essential is to practice the idea of feeling or conceiving yourself as occupying the masterful attitude. Whenever you think of yourself, Think of yourself as being and living and acting in the masterful attitude. Then, in addition, make every desire positive. Make every feeling positive. Make every thought positive. And make every action of mind positive. To make your wants distinct and positive. That is to actually and fully know what you want and then proceed to what you want with all the power that is in you. This will also tend to give strength and positiveness to your individuality. And the reason is that such actions of mind will tend to place in positive, constructive action uh, every force that is in your system. Funny sentence. Um, I like the author's writing style. Yeah, same. Same. Okay. A most valuable method is to picture in your mind your own best idea of what a strong, well-developed individuality would necessarily be. And then think of yourself as becoming more and more like that picture. In this connection, it is well to remember that we gradually grow into the likeness of that which we think of the most. Therefore, if you have a very clear idea of a highly developed individuality and think a great deal of that individuality with a strong, positive desire to develop such an individuality, you will gradually and surely move towards that lofty ideal. Another valuable method is to give conscious recognition to what may be called the bigger man on the inside. Few people think of this greater man that is within them, but we cannot afford to neglect this interior entity for a moment. 
This greater or larger man is not something that is separate and distinct from ourselves. It is simply the sum total of the great power and possibilities that are within us. We should recognize these. Think of them a great deal and desire with all the power of heart and mind and soul to arouse and express more and more of these inner powers. Thus we shall find that the interior man, our real individuality, will become stronger and more active, and our power to apply our greater possibilities will increase accordingly. The value of individuality is so great that it cannot possess, uh, that it cannot possibly be overestimated. For every known method that will develop individuality, therefore, should be applied faithfully, thoroughly, and constantly. In fact, no other thing we can do will bring greater returns. The personality is the visible man. Everything that is visible in the human, ent in the human entity belongs to the personality. But it is more than the body. To say that someone has a fine personality may and may not mean that the personality is beautiful in the ordinary sense of the term. There might uh, there might be no physical beauty, and yet the personality might be highly developed. There might be nothing striking about such a personality, and yet there would be something extremely attractive, something to greatly admire. On the other hand, when the personality is not well developed, there is nothing in the visible man that you can see besides ordinary human clay. Everything existing in such a personality is crude and even gross. There is no excuse for any personality being crude, unrefined, or under this guy's being a hater, right? Say there's no excuse for being a basic bitch is what he's been saying this whole, like the past three paragraphs. I could just sum up the past three paragraphs. Hey, there's, <laughs> there's nothing cool about being a basic bitch. Uh, if, if you're being a basic bitch, you're not going to get anywhere in life. If you have two really strong people next to each other, we all know the basic bitch of the two is the one that's going to lose overall in life. So, <laughs> But he says it so eloquently, with, with such poetic grace. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> all right. Um, sorry, I got, I lost my spot. <laughs> The personality is visible to man. Oh man, that's what you're so funny. Oh man, I think I lost my spot hard. The personality is the visible man. Everything that is visible to human entity blocks. We read that. Oh yeah. There is not a single personality that cannot be so refined and perfected as to become strikingly attractive. <laughs> I'm going to go back a couple sentences because this is just too much. There might not there, there might be nothing striking about such a personality and yet there would be something extremely attractive something to greatly admire on the other hand when the personality is not well developed there is nothing in the visible man that you can see besides ordinary human clay so you guys should use that whenever you want to call someone a basic bitch just be like be like my good sir there is nothing in you there is nothing visible in you that I can see but not besides ordinary human clay. Every, everything exists in such a personality is crude and even gross, but there is no excuse for any personality being crude, unrefined, undeveloped. There's not a single personality that cannot be so refined and perfected as to become strikingly attractive, and there are scores of reasons why such development should be sought. Uh, I love it. The most important reason is that all the forces of man act through the personality. And, and the finer the personality, the more easily can we direct and express the forces we possess. When the personality is crude, we find it difficult to apply in practical life the finer elements that are within us. And here we find one reason why talent or ability so frequently fails to be its best. In such cases, the personality has been neglected. 
and is not a fit instrument through which finer things and greater things can find expression. The personality is related to the individual as the piano is to the musician. Ooh, I like that. The personality is related to the individual as the piano to the musician. If the piano is out of tune, the musician will fail no matter how much of a musician they may be. And likewise, if the piano or instrument is crude in construction, the finest music cannot be expressed through it as a channel. To develop the personality, the principal essential is to learn how to transmute all the creative energies that are generated in the human system, a subject that will be given thorough attention in another chapter. When we proceed to apply the forces within us, we find three fields of action. The first is the conscious field, the field in which the mind acts when we are awake. The second field is the subconscious, that field in which the mind acts when it goes beneath consciousness. It is also the field in which we act when we sleep. The term falling asleep is therefore literally true, as when we go to sleep the ego goes down, so to speak, into another world. A world so vast that only portions of it have thus far been explored. The third field is the superconscious, the field in which the mind acts when it touches the upper realm. And it is when acting in this field that we gain real power and real inspiration. In fact, when we, when we touch the superconscious, we frequently feel as if we have become more than mere men. To know how to act in the superconscious field is therefore highly important. Even though the idea may at first sight uh, seem to be vague and somewhat mystical, we are constantly in touch, however, with the superconscious whether we know it or not. We frequently enter the superconscious when we listen to inspiring music, when we read some book that touches the finer intellect. Uh, when we listen to someone who speaks from what may be termed the inner throne of authority, when we witness some soul-stirring scene in nature, we also touch the superconscious when we are carried away with some tremendous ambition, and, and herein we find practical value in a great measure. When men of tremendous ambition are carried away, so to speak, the power of that ambition they almost invariably reach the higher and finer state of mind, a state where they are not only f where they not only feel more power and determination than they ever felt before, but a state in which the mind becomes so extremely active that it almost invariably gains the necessary brilliancy to work out those plans or ideas that are required in order that the ambition may be realized. It can readily be demonstrated that we get our best ideas from this lofty realm, and it is a well-known fact that no one ever accomplishes great or wonderful things in the dark without touching frequently this sublime, inspiring state. When we train the mind to touch the superconscious at frequent intervals, we are always, uh, we always find the ideas we want. We always succeed in providing the ways and means required, no matter what the difficulties may be. We invariably discover something by which we may overcome and conquer completely. Whenever you find yourself in what may be termed a difficult position, proceed at once to work your mind up into higher and higher attitudes until you touch the superconscious. And when you touch that lofty state, you will soon receive the ideas or the methods that you need. But this is not the only value connected with the superconscious. The highest forces in man are the most powerful, but we cannot use those higher forces without acting through the superconscious field. Therefore, if you want to understand and, and apply all the forces you possess, you must train the mind to act through the superconscious as well as the conscious and the subconscious. However, we must not permit ourselves to live exclusively in this lofty state. Though it is the source of the higher forces in man, those forces that are indispensable um, to the doing of great and important things, nevertheless, 
Those forces cannot be applied unless they are brought down to earth, so to speak, and united with practical action. He who lives exclusively in the superconscious will dream wonderful dreams. But if he does not unite the forces of the superconscious with practical action, he will do nothing else but dream dreams. And those dreams will not come true. It is when we combine uh, mental action in the conscious and subconscious and superconscious that we get the results we desire. In brief, it is the full use of the forces in mind through all the channels of expression that leads to the highest attainment and the greatest achievements. When we proceed with the practical application of any particular force, we shall not find it necessary to cause that force to act through what we may, uh, what may be termed the psychological field. And the reason is that the psychological field in man is the real field of action. It is the field through which the undercurrents flow, and we all understand that it is these undercurrents that determine not only the, the direction of action, but the results that follow action. This idea is well illustrated in the following lines. Straws upon the surface flow. He who would seek for pearls must dive below. Hmm. Giggity. It's like a very provocative line at the same time. Straws upon the surface flow. He who would seek for pearls must die below. Giggity goo. Just me? Could just be me. Childish at times, I know, my bad. Where are we at? Okay. Uh, the term below as applied to the life and consciousness of man is synonymous with the psychological field or the field of the undercurrents. Ordinary minds skim over the surface. Great minds invariably sound these deeper depths and act in and through the psychological field. Their minds dive below into the rich vastness of what may be termed the gold mines of the mind and the diamond fields of the soul. When we enter the psychological field of any force, which simply means the inner and finer field of action of that force, we act through the undercurrents and thereby proceed to control these currents. It is the field of the undercurrents that we find both the origin and the action of cause, whether physical or mental. It is these currents, when acted upon intelligently, that remove what we do not want and produce those changes that we do want. They invariably produce, uh, produce effects, both physical and mental, according to the action that we give to them. And all those things that pertain to the personality will respond only to the action of those currents. That is, you cannot produce any effect in any part of the mind or body unless you first direct the undercurrents of the systems to produce those effects. I'll read that again. They invariably produce effects, both physical and mental, according to the action that we give to them, and all those things that pertain to the personality will respond only to the action of those currents, that is, you cannot produce any effect in any part of the mind or body unless you first direct the undercurrents of the system to produce those effects. To act through the undercurrents, therefore, is absolutely necessary no matter what we may wish to do or what forces we may wish to control, direct, or apply. And we act upon those undercurrents only when we enter the psychological field in like manner. We can turn to good account all things in practical everyday life only when we understand the psychology of those things. The reason is that when we understand the psychology of anything, we understand the power that is uh, we we understand the power that is back of that particular thing. 
and that controls it and gives it definition. And consequence, when we understand the, the, the psychology of anything in our own field of action or in our environment, we will know how to deal with it so as to secure whatever results that particular thing has the power to produce. But this law is especially important in dealing with the forces, whether those forces act through the mind or through any one of the faculties, through the personality or through the conscious, subconscious or superconscious fields. In brief, whatever we do in trying to control and direct the powers we possess, we must enter the deeper life of those powers so that we can get full control of the undercurrents. It is the it is the way those undercurrents flow that determines results. And as we direct those currents in any way that we desire, we naturally conclude that we can secure whatever results we desire. End, chap end chapter dose. <sighs> what do you guys think? Not too shabs, eh? I like it. I like the undercurrents part too. It's a it, the undercurrents part is a very nice. Uh, it's a very nice. bridge for a lot of things that we talk about it makes me think of um we have a conversation here on the channel you might have heard it, you might not of sort of going with the flow and we can we can going with the flow as representing being the, the current the undercurrent that um i can't remember this guy's name of christian larson the author of the book he talks about this undercurrent the, the, the undercurrent can be attributed to sort of um, the, the feminine flowy aspect, the current, right? It's all, but the current's always moving. That's the power of that flow, that current, is it? It's fucking endless, just endless raw power. But as Sir Larson here is talking about um, directing the flow of that current, so then we sort of apply the masculine aspect, which is direction, which is structure definition so we say we define the current we control the current because that's where the power comes from so it's not about going with the flow as much as it is about creating the flow and then getting into it and flowing downstream you don't we don't want to get into any lazy river because lazy river could just be going in, unless you want to go in circles as by all means do it do it, do you boo boo it's just i like how he sort of blends the two qualities of energy if you will together that there's both a definite direction that we should have the current going in and that there's such thing as a current period from which we're having action and thought being generated from at all times which is that feminine um, it's cool i like it i like it a lot Two chapters is good for tonight. Who dog it? I'm downloaded that book. Haven't read a book in a while. Nice. I, actually, I've, I've read a couple books these past couple weeks. I've been killing it, right? Two books in two books in like three weeks. I haven't done that in years. Oh, Brandy Sherpa, thank you for the donation. Love your vibe and your ukulele. All right, I'll have to play you guys. I'll have to busk for your guys' tips with the ukulele again soon. I do. If you guys know what busking is. Maybe you see musicians on the street playing music for money. It's called, the technical term is called busking. It's one of my all-time favorite. Half, straight up, half the time I enjoy playing music on the streets more than a paid, quote-unquote, paid gig. There's just something, something about it, and I haven't been able to do it since before COVID. It breaks my heart and my wallet. 
So maybe I'll busk for you guys online. <laughs> what the you? What the you? Serious. Thank you though, Benny, for the for the super chat donation. Thank you guys for. Uh, feel free to join my Patreon. I put my Patreon has discounts to my Etsy shop. If you like, you know, entheogenic, spiritual, sort of cultural based plants and and herbal remedies and homemade beeswax candles, um, frankincense resins. We have a bunch of cool shit on the thing. So do that. Thanks to donations on on my Cash App. I think I saw one pop up, a donation for Cash App. I didn't see the name on it though, my bad. But thanks, thanks for the... Cash Apps are nice too because YouTube takes literally half of everything I make to YouTube, they take 50%. They tax my ass 50% on YouTube. You guys believe that? Insane. So they charge, so if I put an ad on my video, they charge, they'll, they take money from the ad and then they'll take money from and then they'll pay me for letting me have that ad on my channel. But the money that they pay me, they actually take 50% back. <laughs> Which is the fucking strangest thing. So I do appreciate the Cash App donations is basically what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. So anything, other than that, how you guys been? You guys been up to anything cool lately? You guys been killing and learning anything new or some friends become enemies some enemies become friends anything interesting happen <coughs> Brandy yeah I mean if it's easier to super chat I'm not going to complain about people <laughs> if it's like a convenience thing, thank you. you guys don't have to give me shit. So you even making a couple bucks here and there is still dope. But yeah, if it's if it's not an issue, Cash App fucking wins hands down. No no comp, no competition. Thanks for all the links. Thanks for the links, Sir John Smith. All you guys should thank John Smith proper too, because um. He helps a lot behind the scenes. It's been, um, he, nine times out of ten, he's making my thumbnails. He's always helping us out with links when you guys need him in the chat room. It's a huge help. Nothing interesting at all. Yesenia, damn, that's a bummer. We gotta get you a hobby, man. We gotta get you a nice hobby. Knitting, maybe? Gardening? Growing your own mushrooms. Mushrooms are always fun to do. To, to grow. Mushrooms are fun to grow. The legal kind. Both kinds are fun to grow, but I'm not advocating for the other kind. Don't do drugs, kids, or adults, or other. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whatever I have to say to not get me in trouble, that. <laughs> we'll call it. Did we have a lot of people in the chat room today? 26, nice, that's a good number. Uh, teach the ukulele? Oh, damn, I can teach you guys the ukulele real fast. I can get you guys playing your first ukulele song in like 10 minutes. Cake. Bread and butter. Making masks with mama? Nice. Make that money. Make that mask, make that money. Sprinkle, sprinkle, as you sure would say. Is she still live right now? I wish there was a way where you could just jump into someone else's live. I would crash the hell out of her lives. I'd be like, what up? Welcome home, my letters. What are we talking about? Do you imagine my face just popped up and a sheer live? She's like, what the fuck? How'd you get here? And I'm like, what up? What it do to woo woo? Codes, bitches. It's all code. That would be that would be amazing. That would make that would make my day. All right, looks like we're pretty much done for the thing for the evening. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out. Um, 
Oh, we have plat. I should probably advertise that plat medicine retreats are still are still an ongoing thing. Our next one is I shouldn't say hour. I'm not really. Ho- I'm just hosting the space. I'm not really running any. I'm not running anything at, for the retreat. So the group that is holding it, uh, they're still holding it monthly. If you're into plant medicine retreats, that sort of thing, hit me up. Send me an email, and uh, it's based out of. Northern Southern California, Santa Barbara County. If you guys know where that is, Santa Barbara County's coast, coastal Central California. Um, that's an option. And yeah, maybe to, maybe tomorrow we'll do the next two chapters of this. I would like to get it finished sooner than later because these are fun. Laughing gif. Yeah. Well, that's not just everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'll uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah.